Hey, good morning. Hello, once again, we are here. You are uh, joining Foster's Animal World on a Tuesday. All right, so today is, um, what, the Court of Public Opinion. Uh, we're going to wrap up this whole uh, Mike Hausenbauer uh, drama that has been going around for way too long, so we're going to uh, reached an opinion uh, today of is it criminal activity or is it stupidity? Uh, Mike is going to be uh, Skyping in really soon, and we've got a couple of guests today. Uh, one's coming in the studio. Who we got? Hell, good morning, Paula. You went. Wait a minute. I think she, you muted your mic, Paula. You got to unmute it, Paula. <laughs> I clicked it just as I did that. Oh. Good morning, everybody. How good are morning. you? Good. Good. good you? How's I'm the, good. Good. How's Sunshine the weather in here? The monsoon rain is over at least until, I don't know, 11 or 12 o'clock today. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> <coughs> okay. <coughs> well, and good morning to uh, Pitbull Energy Drink, uh, our sponsor. And Paula's having some right there, and I have some. This is. Um, this is the one that is citrus, so I'm going to wait and maybe Rock can get me a can of the plain because these citrus tend to um, make my tongue uh, uh, swell a little bit, and it gets weird for me talking. So, but... Um, I had a whole lot to say about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that left it wide open. Hey, uh, Paula, who we got today? We have... <clears throat> We have uh, Maria Sanchez coming in studio. She should be there shortly. Cool. And we have <clears throat> my new friend. <clears throat> excuse me. My new friend is going to call in. Her name's Kendra. And she's going to talk to us about uh, what she does. Uh, she makes items. And the uh, part of the profit goes to help. Uh, shelters and rescue. So I'm uh, I'm really excited to see what she has to share with us today. And I'm sure uh, we probably have all of uh, our regulars calling in, maybe some new ones. We've got a jammed packed show today. So sit down, buckle in, hang on. Here we go. All right. Here we go. <laughs> and um, so as far as all of the phone callers, uh, calling in, you guys should probably call in uh, right away. And if you're on hold for a while, just um, stay there, and we'll get to you uh, as possible. So um, the one thing that I guess I want to do say is to start off with is, you know, there's a lot of anger, uh, meanness, and hate in the uh, animal you know, activist community across the board, and particularly in the dog world, you know, uh, and for sure in the pit bull world, you know. But Paula, what I did is I, I gave it a lot of thought, right? And, you know, what it comes down to is this. 99% of the people who are angry and, and mean and, and, you know, all of these things, they really it comes down to frustration you know because and that's what we've been trying to affect change for you know uh, the situation in the dog world between the um, you know the the breeding the overbreeding of dogs the uh, you know the dog fighting the animal abuse and just the way that things haven't changed. People haven't seen change. Um, I equate it to, you know, those commercials that came on with the, uh, we used to see with the Ethiopian babies with the flies all around their nose and the big bellies all swole up from hunger. You know, the, the dog community is like that. It's, you know, if you've been in it for a while and you've been watching it, it's like watching, you know, those 
those starving kids and with the flies and the hunger and all of that stuff day after day after day for years and and people want to do something you know with those commercials with the ethiopian kids you used to be able to send in your you know two dollars your five dollars your ten dollars and you know that took care of something you know you fed a baby for a month or a year whatever you know but with the dog community uh, there's no change you know people can't see any change these big organizations you know you donate nineteen dollars a month and nobody ever says so they send you a t-shirt and uh, on the street level, we don't see change. You know, we don't see change with these hundreds and thousands of rescues who are taking two dogs uh, out of the shelter and take them home and, you know, spend the money to rehab them and then give them away, but while eight dogs are coming in the front door. So watching this Ethiopian baby situation in the dog world has caused a lot of frustration, you know, and it makes people angry and, and they're so angry they're just striking out, you know, they strike out they, it's like their nerves are so wound up, you know that they're looking for anything to jump on to, to release this pain that they're really feeling that is being directed you know, at something that is really not the problem, that is really not the issue, but they need this release. So uh, we have to affect some change so all these people can relax because the dog situation in, you know, around the world, really, but I want to say, again, in North America is driving people crazy. It literally is driving people crazy, you know, because... Um, some of the things that are just happening, you know, is shameful. So we've got a pro uh, program, an idea, a concept that we're going to be putting into work, and we're going to ask everybody, you know, to get behind us. Uh, uh, if you saw the last show that we had up about um, our our 50,000 uh, mission, uh, and that's with, um, you know, Shorty Rossi, uh, Johnny Ray, Johnny and I, Fred Cray, Paula, uh, we're going to try to, you know, hit the road and um, uh, Nina and Craig Wall, you know, from the uh, uh, viral video, you know, we want to get them out there, too. And what I'm thinking, uh, Paula, is, you know, because it uh, ever since Michael Vick and, and now, you know, it's been hundreds of, uh, you know, NFL players having. Uh, dog problems and wife problems, beating and starving and all of these type of things. Uh, I'm thinking about, you know, asking the community to get behind us. And we asked the NFL and uh, the NBA and the players associations of both of them to fund our tour for uh, animal education, you know, across uh, North America. You know, one with the spade and neutering campaign to spade and neuter, you know, 50,000 dogs and, um, and, you know, have educational um, events where we can educate the kids and some of these big superstar players can come out and, you know, That'll help bring the issue to pop culture, you know, because we got to do some change and and God knows the NFL needs to do something, you know, repeatedly. You know, there was another player, Paula, that uh, uh, is accused of starving two dogs, man. I don't know if you heard about that. I just I don't get it. You don't get it or you didn't hear about it? <clears throat> I didn't hear about Well, we talked about it. Um, mm -hmm last night but I, I just you know i don't get it if you're gonna get a dog and mistreat it mm -hmm. don't uh -huh. get a stuffed animal i mean you know. <laughs> yeah right yeah that that'll work you know uh and also you know paula this is um the i think it's the one year anniversary of uh the show we did on uh, uh bring our dog uh bring our girls home you know so yeah. So anyone who, um, uh, you know, missed that, you must have been up under a rock. But, um, you know, uh, the Boca Raton a-holes in Africa kidnapped the girls. And, uh, you know, they're still missing today, which is shameful, you know. And having a company called Daughters to Feed Films, um, somewhat, you know, sensitive to that. And um, so, you know. 
nothing has changed, man. You know, so uh, let's let's be about change. Okay, so Mike, uh, where are you? Uh, if you gonna call in, Skype in, then now's the time to do it because uh, this portion of the show is dedicated to you. I've gotten um, so many uh, emails, Paula, of all kinds of uh, information that uh, we can, you know, I've reviewed. And um, okay, Mike says he sent a couple of uh, requests to Skype and nothing so let's just see what the hell is happening here we pull him up on the, the old cell phone here ha 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 hey i don't okay. see him either. yes i see uh one from okay one ringy dingy uh, no. two Hello? mike yes what is your skype address Huh? What, what are you asking? Can you just text me your Skype address or give it to me? Here, I'm going to give the phone to Rock and you can do it, give it to him. Hold on. It's off the speaker. Okay, so as we're uh, getting Mike up here hey, on the Skype, and we will yeah, get this part started. Yeah, I didn't see any on here. What is it? Uh, also, um, just give me the um, address. We're going to have. Uh, a couple of people calling in, and that would that will. Okay. So, Paula. I didn't have any um, any requests. In, in the mean. Yes. In the meantime, uh, maybe we would just uh, start off with Hello? some dogs. Here. If, uh, uh, Rock hold on a second. Hold on, Mike. Yeah. Can you just give him the Skype address? He doesn't know if he's not. I'm trying to look it up to see what it is. Just to check it out. I have a totally different computer than what I normally use. So I'm just texting okay, back. Okay, can you just text it to me? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so why don't we, in the meantime, we're going to start off and rescue some dogs. Because uh, uh, for those who don't know, last week we hit our, um, our master, what, our record again. 12 dogs at least. Uh, was saved, and that's a good thing. So, yeah, well, so, so I think so. While Mike is getting his act together once again, we will. Um, we will if you are good with that, Rock, can we do some dogs now. All right, Paula. So you guys do some dogs, and we'll come back and start this puppy off. All right. Ah, uh, how cute! You said puppy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. No, sorry. Okay, Rock, if you are ready. I'm ready to go. Okay. First up, we have Byron. He's the bodybuilder pup here at the shelter. And yes, he's buff. He has the muscles, but he's very gentle, calm, and sweet. He's the silent, strong type, super mellow. I think he does doggy meditation. He is a neutered male, brown and white pit bull terrier mix. He's about three years old, and he has been at the shelter since March the 12th. And now next up, we have Champ. <clears throat> Excuse me. Champ was supposed to exit oh, on 321, but he didn't make it out yet. So anyway, <clears throat> he is very friendly and he has a cool friend, Frog, who he loves to play with. You can see photos of his play date with Frog on the thread. He has been in the kennel too long and needs a home and a yard he can run around free in. He is a neutered male, black and white pit bull terrier. He's about two years old and he has been at the shelter since March the 15th. Now we have Carla. Uh, Carla was supposed to exit on 321 also. She was picked up as a stray and she had been caught in a trap at first she was very feel, fearful at the shelter, and rightfully so. She has been nothing but sweet and calm when she was taken out of the kennel. She is a tan and white pit bull terrier. Not sure of her age, 
but she has been at the shelter for a long time now, since March the 16th. Uh, next up, we have Jewel. And I'm sorry to say, Jewel is no longer listed. I am waiting to find out um, the news that she was adopted. So keep our paws crossed on her. Now we have Cyrus. Cyrus was supposed to exit the, sh the shelter in <clears throat> February. Uh, so he is very urgent. Not only is this fellow handsome, good looking and gorgeous, he is a very, very happy boy. Now, how can he be that happy in a noisy place? And for as long as he's been there, I just don't understand it. I don't know what his secret is, but I'm glad he isn't letting it get him down. He is male, one and white in color. He is a Pitbull Terrier blend, and he has been there a long, long time, since February the 19th. So he needs out. Now we have Ted. This baby is really special. He is fearful, and that is why he is in isolation. He has never barked at the staff, just cried a little bit, and even his cries were very timid. Please don't pass this boy up. He has so much love to give you. He has nothing, and nobody is even noticing him. Ted is listed as a male brown sharp Chinese Sharpe mix. He's thought to be about two years old, and he has been at the shelter since March the 22nd. Now we have Joseph. This boy's photo does not do him justice. He has more photos from his recent photo shoot, and they are adorable. They are autograph worthy, and I am sure he would offer a kiss along with that paw print. Joseph is a white and brown pit bull terrier. He has been residing at the shelter since March the 23rd. All of these dogs are courtesy of San Bernardino Shelter, and their address is 333 Chandler Place. They are open Tuesdays and Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to five. The shelter is closed Sunday and Monday. The phone number there is 909-384-1304. They start answering the phones at 7.30 a.m. So you can call them right now and reserve your dog. And that's the, our first set of dogs for today. Great, 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 great. Okay, I hear some noise. I, oh. All right, Mike, uh, but we don't have a picture for you, Mike. Do you need to hit a button or something? Hey, Mike, can you hear us? Yeah, I was just waiting for Paula to finish with the dogs. I was saying we cannot see you on cam. We hear you, but we don't see you. You should be able to see me now. Okay, we're waiting for it to come in, come through. Okay. There we go. Now we got you. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. There you are. Hey. Okay. All right. So here we go. Um, and anyone with um, uh, phone calls or whatever, you know, now is the time for you to call in and go on the hold. And so, Mike, um, welcome, welcome back. Hey, how's it going today? Well, here we go. Um, yeah, uh, so so tell us uh about, you know, for those who who are not familiar with this situation, uh give us the real quick thirty second update on how it started and what what it is. What do you gotta say? Well, um what happened is I I I invested into different areas of trying to help save and rescue the animals and I've you know, transported and fostered and adopted and tried to help out in different ways. Um, I went to, um, wrote letters, went to Congress, uh, tri you know, got involved with um, helping at animal shelters and rescues. And eventually, you know, I thought that the best idea would maybe be to open a shelter and try to save some of these New York City dogs 
because it was going to be such a difficult thing to accomplish um, without without doing something on a large scale. Um, I really I, I feel the need that we need to step up and just really make something happen. Okay, and and um, I pretty much uh, you know bit off more than I could chew. Um, I thought there would be a lot more interest. I thought um, there was a lot of things that I could take care of and do. Um, I worked very hard on it. Um, I thought there would be uh, a lot more financial help, and it just didn't happen. There's no, I, I tried everything I could. I tried to get as many people to help, and it just it, it wasn't going to happen. And I, I couldn't afford four thousand dollars a month for rent plus another thousand for utilities and maybe go three months and then you know the place have to close down and you're stuck with 40 or 50 dogs that you have to find a home for all at once and i didn't want to put anybody or any animal or or anybody whatsoever human being or animal at risk at fault or anything like that mm -hmm. so uh um, how did the money part come in? Well, the money part come, came in where if, if it was going to be a non-profit shelter, then you would have to have donations. And to have, to have the rent and the, the utilities and to have the accessories and everything needed for the animals, you would have to have money coming in. So I figured if I started early enough that I could get enough to get started and get in the building, but that never happened. Uh, the reason being it was only $1,300 in three months, and basically if you do the math, that would never work, uh, okay. trying to support a, a $5,000 a month venture. All right, so, so had you ever did this kind of thing before? I never have. All right, so what made you think you could do it? Well, I thought if I had enough people that were willing to help and learn from their experience and get some experienced people in there, that you know we could we could make something happen. So, um, well, did you I, did you did you start off with trying to get some experienced people? Yes, I did. Uh, volunteers, um, some rescues. No, I, actually I mean, found two no. or three rescues that were willing to pull dogs from New York City. No, 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 no. I mean, in, in the whole effort, you, did, you, did you associate yourself with anybody who knew how to do this or anybody who had done it before? Um, yeah, I had some people that I, that I knew that were going to, you know, give me some help with uh, grants and different things like that. Well, well, wait a minute. Grants take a while to happen. So what I'm saying is, did you involve anybody in this idea, in the, in the, the team aspect of this thing, that had done it before, that knew what they were doing? Okay. So we lost um, uh, Mike's feed. So um, Rock will try to get you back. Uh, who's on the phone? Hey, Foster, it's Lori. Hey, Lori. Good morning. How are you, sunshine? Oh, I'm hanging in there. That's another call, right? Uh, so what, what's happening, Lori? Oh, I was just trying to get the show up. I had to redo my computer, so I'm, I'm downloading my flash player now so I can get you up. Been running around like crazy. And, of course, going to another day of saving animals in breeder Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so you got the show now? No, I'm still downloading my Flash Player, um, but I will soon. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, you go ahead and keep going. We're going to keep going with the show, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, you I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm listening. I can listen on my phone right now. Okay, you got sure. it, dear. All right. Well, we're going to, uh, we lost Mike. We're getting him back, and we're going to uh, take, who is it, Ray? Yeah. Hey, Ray. Foster, how you doing? I'm blessed, man. And you? Um, well, it's just a matter of, you know, it, if you look at the dates of when this man was claiming that he knew what he was doing, he had, you know, already ascertained the property. He claims he already had the zoning approved. He claimed he already applied for all the permits. 
this was long before it ever turned to light that there was nothing there. That it was all lies that he had made those statements of. Hmm. And 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 Ray, just for full disclosure, what's your name? Your full name? Because I know Ray you. Ray Castina. Okay. And and so Ray, you've been following the whole thing from the beginning. I take it correct. Yes, I have. Okay, and I I got a bunch of uh, documents that Ray sent me that I looked over it and. They constitute a lot of back and forth and uh, to back up some of the things that she is saying and um, the things that Mike is saying and the different contradictions. So, so Ray, where, where do you think this whole thing went wrong? And what do you think is, what is the situation in your opinion? Uh, he may have started out with good intentions. But I believe it went extremely wrong when he started lying and telling people that had already gotten the property. Mm -hmm. He had told people he was there work property when he never even had a lease or keys. Oh, okay. So, Mike, where'd he go? Uh, Paula? Paula? Yeah. Yeah. You're, yes. You're here, right? I'm here. Okay. And, uh, Mike, where'd you go? I should be here. I Oh, okay. I see you guys. Okay, Mike is back. So, Mike, uh, did you hear what Ray said? Uh, no, I did not. Okay, Ray, uh, I asked Ray, Mike, where, where, in her opinion, did the whole thing go array? And she said she believes that you started out with good intentions, but then uh, when you started lying about having the keys to the place and having the property, um, that's when things took a turn for the worse. What do you say about that? Well, I never said I had the keys. I, I, and I did not have the property because I went there the first time and the landlord had a deal for me where I wasn't going to have to pay any rent until it finally got open. And the second time I went up there to visit and talk with him after I'd sent him a copy of a lease for him to sign. He, which he could not understand it on his computer. Um, I went up there and he changed the whole thing and he said I had to have eight thousand dollars to get the key. Okay, uh, Ray. Yeah. What do you What do you say? I say he's a liar. Right, because from what she uh, sent me, Mike, um, it it says where you did say you had the keys. Right? Is that correct, that Ray? He already, he already had the, the the approval of zoning that he had already applied for the permit and was taken care of, and that was back on January 8th. Mike? Yes, and I asked the landlord if it was approved for all that stuff that I was trying to do, and he said it was. I asked him for a if there was any problem with the lead paint or anything else that was wrong with the building that needed to be taken up with zoning. And he said everything was okay, and then he knew the mayor of Trenton, and there wouldn't be any issues with it. Right. but That's what I was told. Right. But you, but you, are you denying that you told everyone that you had the keys and that you had did the zoning and all that stuff? I did not have the keys. I never had the keys because there was never enough money to sign a lease. You can't have the keys to, if you don't have a lease. And the zoning would have been taken care of on March 24th if I had went to the meeting with the city of Trenton. But at that, almost at that point, there was no sense in that because there was no way that I myself or anybody else could come up with the eight thousand dollars to get the place open. Right, but in on January eighth, Ray. Yeah, right? January eighth. There's a PM, but Mike and I, where he states zoning be approved. Right, and that's what she sent me, Mike. That, that you sent in uh, for, for, for the landlord. Yes. He told me the no, zoning I was approved. I didn't ask you about a landlord. I didn't there. say anything right. about but, a landlord. I asked you point blank about the Hold on, Mike, 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 Mike. Only one of us can talk at a time. Yeah, so, so, so go ahead, Ray. It, on January 8th, I asked him directly about the, the zoning. Because it, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out you can't put dogs in the middle of a, a residential area. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I 
asked him, he point blank said zoning was already approved. Okay. And uh, and you said that that didn't have anything to do with the, the landlord or anything. He never brought the landlord up in any of that conversation whatsoever. Okay. And let me ask this then. At what point did the whole money thing start, Mike? Mike? What was the question? I said, at what point did the money... Uh, uh, any did the money part start? Uh, I guess it was maybe the beginning of January. Mm -hmm. Okay, around the January. And day. once I found out that the, the, the that there was going to be no way possible to do the venture, then I just returned all the money to the people that um, so kindly donated it. And I apologize to the ones that I talked to. And then there was other ones that just want to talk to me. Right. So, but, I mean, but, I, I did what I could and I tried and it just didn't happen. Uh -huh. I didn't steal anything. I didn't, you know, I mean, it's. Right. But the, 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 um, I think part of what went wrong here too is the fact that you didn't, um, start offering or make the decision to return people's money until, um, everybody start, uh, picking the whole thing apart. Correct. Well, no. The the fact is is that the shelter scheduled opening was going to be April first, and I returned all, all the money before April first or close to that point because I knew it wasn't going to happen. So there was no sense in having the money in a a, a fund me account or whatever it was because it wasn't going to do anybody any good if the place didn't open and that was what the purpose of the donations were so right. therefore i returned it right but um but you didn't in answer my fashion. But you, right but you didn't answer my question what i said was you didn't bring up returning the money to people and the whole, whole thing that the whole thing wasn't going to work until after the whole um you know, thing blew up where people started picking it apart and seeing that there was problems with what you were saying. Correct? You didn't offer to return the money well, before they, they started. Obviously, they, they could obviously see there was problems with what was going on because when I would make a post on Facebook and say that it's going to cost 4000 a month for the rent and 1000 for the utilities and another seven or 8000 to fix the building up to just get open, and there wasn't, there wasn't that amount of money, then there was a problem. So, yeah, I was going to start returning the money. Right. And I did return it all. Right. But see, Mike. And, and, then, and, right. then the, and then the people, you know, and, and I, I'm not into all the drama stuff. And the people started, you know, asking me questions. And I got on the phone with Rob. And me and him had an hour-long conversation. And I told him what, was, what I was going to do. And I apologized to him. And said look you know i'm sorry I, I bit off more than i could chew you know it, you can call me whatever you want i don't care because i tried and it didn't work so call me what you want say it on the air you know hey it is what it is at this point i returned all the money you know what, what more can i do correct when and again uh, i appreciate that but what uh once again i'm saying that see you saying that obviously people can see stuff but what i'm trying to do is to backtrack to find out where everything went you know haywire uh to the point of people suspecting you know uh criminal activity on your part and that had to start at some point and ray well uh, do you understand what i'm saying i understand exactly what you're saying okay and, and from your point of view maybe Michael under uh, uh, hear what I'm saying if from your point of view where did that happen at right uh, I believe it happened it had to be the end of December beginning of January because he was asking for funds he was making it to the whole world that this was a good job. at no point he ever until everyone posting on his wall at no point did he admit that it wasn't a go. Even the in Trenton a, that created on, and was taking care of the pet safe haven wall, mm -hmm. that page, that 
the, the Trenton humane officer called him out. Hmm. Mike has lied every on this. Mm-hmm. The, um, you know, see, Mike, that's, the, the, that's part of the problem is that you never came forward, you know, and said um, that it wasn't going to work and you kept you know, perpetrating that it was it was going to work without, you know, um, um, sh you know, admitting the problems and different things. And that was where people felt like you were leading them astray, because even with um, as I remember, because I, I got some messages about from Debbie Dahmer that you were going on her show to uh, announce the opening and you didn't even have a facility. So I think that, you know, the, the, uh, the, the misdirection, you know, that you gave people and continue to give people until, you know, they just, you know, as a group started, you know, uh, trying to, at that point, it became an investigation type of thing of exposing what you were doing because you never came forward to say what you're saying now until after these people start coming after you. Correct? No, I, I, posted, I, I posted to the people and I had also mentioned to Debbie as well as some of the other people that I was involved with and talked to about this. And I said, look, you know, it's not, it's not going to work. There's not enough it's it's way too big of an idea for it to be funded. There's just no way. And when did I mean, that happen? Even, even if per se when did huh? when did that happen, Mike? Uh, it was uh, I don't know, beginning of March. Okay, and because she, because right. me me and her talked about being on her show. Right, but and at at uh, a couple weeks before that. I said no. She wow. said no, because um, I, I was talking with her and you know on the phone, and I said it's not going to work. Right, and but Mike, she rescheduled and had right, but that's know. right, and that's that's the else can show. right, but that's March first, okay, and uh, and the whole thing was happening in January. So from January and February, when things were you know proceeding along as everything was normal and then march 1st but uh, ray you guys started questioning mike and the whole process and possibilities of this thing uh way back in you know the latter part of january is that correct you're questioning him in the beginning of january yeah and and the fact that see mike that's what i'm saying the fact for for you to be holding on as and acting like everything was going along just fine until you know first of march that's a long time um whole uh we got another caller to add into this hello who's on the phone oh good morning foster this is uh judy calling i'm janice dropping on facebook how okay. are you doing today hon? i'm good janice how are you oh i i i i'm doing have you been listening to the conversation have you been listening to the conversation, Janice? Um, I have been trying. My reception for the show is intermittent due to my browser. I okay. have bad connection, so I get, you know what I mean, uh, on and off. Okay. Get off. So what do you have to add? Um, you know, I, I just don't understand this whole thing where he thinks, uh, Mike is thinking that putting the uh, cart before the horse works. Um, he, he has, on many occasions, been confronted about this. On threads, and, and he just he he backpedals himself into saying, "Oh, I'm sorry," and, and then he won't make a public apology. Then he 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 goes with a harder vengeance towards it, and says, "Come on, I'm waiting, I'm waiting," and never once does he understand that by telling people things that aren't true, that that in itself is lying. You can't do it the way. You can't tell people you have permits and I've got this under control. But right. in fact, you don't. It, it, it's exactly. really a shame that um, anybody would try to do that with anybody. Right. Um, well, you know, we're, we're working with the dogs here. Right. Um, 
and um, it just breaks my heart to see somebody who thinks that they, they can fast track it to having a solution and an answer when it's not that simple. Mm-hmm. There's processes and procedures to go through at all costs. Right, and that's what um, we're understanding now, and that he's saying. And again, um, and he challenges people after the fact. He'll say something, and then he'll challenge people, and then he tries. Uh, it's, it, it breaks my heart, you know. When we're out for the dogs and we're dealing with this kind of stuff, just come clean with it, and he won't. And then he's trying to, you know, um, act like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I failed people." Well, Janice, my frustrations there. Right, really is. right, right, right. Well, and Janice, the the bottom line here today uh, is, I think that you know, for me, uh, because Mike, uh, you know, came on our show, and uh, he when he came on our show too, I want to make that clear that he wasn't talking about um, this venture. He was talking about being involved with uh, getting laws changed in shelters uh, in the Virginia area and different places around the country. Uh, Paula, what do you think so far? (laughs) I'm the wrong person to ask right now, Foster. Okay, well, we're not going to ask you. (laughs) No. Uh, I have a lot to say, but um, my mom always said, if you can't say something nice, well, just be quiet. Well, that's what, <laughs> well, you know, Moms Mabley said, you know, when she went to, I the, love her. when she went to the funeral of her second husband, they, they said, Moms, do you want to say something? And Mom said, well, they said, if, if you can't say nothing about the dead, uh, you know, if you can't say nothing good about the dead, don't say nothing at all. So I'm going to just say he did good. <laughs> you know, so, so, so that was mom. So I, I feel you. Um, but the thing is this. Um, but let me ask you guys, because I think I kind of uh, got a, you know, uh, a judgment on the whole thing. And But, Ray, um, you first. Do you think there's any criminal activity involved here? Do you think Mike was trying to uh, be a criminal, or uh, do you think it just... Um, uh, I think it turned into a criminal activity. Okay, so you think, at what point? Oh, you saw that. how easy it was that people were going to send money in and send donations in. Mm-hmm. Okay. At what point do you think because that he happened? He took money in through you caring, and he took money in directly through uh, PayPal. Or okay, and as far as you guys know, has everybody been returned their money? The only thing that we can verify that's been returned is the money through you caring, because the representative at you caring answered us back in an email that yes, all those funds have been refunded. Mm-hmm. Um, we have no idea how much money he took in directly through PayPal. Okay, yeah. and and I think Mike had told me that he couldn't, for some reason, uh, had a PayPal. Somebody else did that. Can uh, Mike? Are you coming back, or you can call back on the phone? Uh, Michael, mm-hmm. huh? Originally, he started out saying that this facility was going to be there? an overflow for New York City care and con- animal care and control. Oh, that's what I was telling you. Yeah. Okay. So, it never was. Yeah. You can't just you can't just say something and have it happen. Right. I mean, we all have dreams. We all have dreams, but um, y- you don't get out there and I- I- um, start running around grabbing friends mm-hmm. the way he was and want to be the man in charge. You know, mm-hmm. I'm the bus driver. Beep beep. Mm-hmm. Um, and think it works that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there was criminal activity. Um, you, you, you can't go out and do things without knowing what the law states and then get up in the court and law say, oh, well, I did no, I'm sorry. It, it, it's just, you know, be careful, people. Yeah. It, you know, the law is the law. Right. If you don't understand, I told Mike a long time ago, do what it is you do and stay there for, for, for the dogs, you know. Um, don't go too big. And, and, and he's all about the crowd and he builds himself off of ego. Uh, uh, I I agree with that. Uh, you know, I I think it, yeah, it was but criminal, and you don't go into a court of law after the fact and say, "Oh well, I'm sorry." Mm. You know, he's he's on many many occasions, um, from what I hear, 
tried to go into damage control after the fact, like, you know, it, it very, very blatantly and obvious. Mm-hmm. And then he'll go right into the next situation. Mm-hmm. I understand the need to save dogs. We all have that. But don't pull on the heartstrings and the passion of people. Oh, yeah, it's the phone. You know, there's a lot of people that just that, that want want, okay, but we, that's want right. so bad. Right. And so, um, hold on. Well, I think. Oh, okay. That's Katie. While we wait on Mike to call back in, okay, Katie. Yes. How are you, dear? Oh, surviving. Okay. Uh, and for those who uh, don't know, Katie is one of the people who, uh, you know, gave money to Mike's campaign as well as um, she was planning on moving. So, Katie, have you been listening? Uh, oh, I thought that was Katie. Uh, oh, we, Hello, it's Rob Nugent. How you doing? I'm good, Rob. How are you? Good. Did I call the bad time? No, go right ahead. Have you been listening? I have, and I, I wasn't sure what time it was all going to be on. Um, okay. I'm so, so, very interested in, on the topic. So what do you, what do you think, Rob? What's the what's the situation? Is this criminal activity or? Who is that? Katie's there. Too. Okay, we got Katie on the line. Well, that's the only way we can. Okay, hold on. Um, we might have to take. Um, um, what's his name? Um, Mike on the phone because if the Skype is not working. Yeah. So, Rob, do you think it was uh, some criminal activity or what? I believe it was fraudulent. Um, I'm from New York, and with the laws that we do have up there. Anything I've I've been uh, taking out some of these rescues that are doing the fraudulent um, activities, but they're they're taking money without anything in order. Um, they're they're not they're not having any escrow in order. They're not having any um, properties in order. They're not having attorneys do the these these things need to be run as a business and not just. Uh, couple of people on the board. So anytime any money is taken in, and GoFundMe accounts and all these other things that are, are put out there, it, it is fraudulent. Um, I've, I've spoken with uh, Mayor de Blasio's office, and a lot of this, they, they know that a lot of this is not associated with MYACC, and they know that um, this money is just being taken in, and, and there's nothing to show for it on the other end. Mm-hmm. Um, it, was it a great idea? Yeah, it was. It was a, it was a great pipe dream. Um, would, would it have saved animals? Maybe, but when when we're talking to the officials in New Jersey themselves, right in Trenton, and none of this, the, the zoning wasn't even for animals. It wasn't even for an animal shelter zone. Um, I mean, it's just he put the cart way before the horse. Okay. And anytime money is taken in, it's it's fraudulent. Okay, then uh, I need to uh, get Katie in here. Hold on, let me ask you, uh, in case, because our phone lines are are full, so I might have to let uh, somebody go. So Janice, I might end up letting you go if uh, if um, if what's this guy? Mike uh, calls in. Uh, I'm asking you, Mike, if you're listening, call in here. Let me talk to Katie. Oh, Katie, you there? Yes. Okay. Um, so, Katie, what do you what do you think? Is it uh, some criminal activity or just misguided? Um... I mean, in my heart, I think Mike started off with good intentions. Um, I mean, I don't. He started off intentionally doing something wrong, but I think it got too big, too fast, and um, ultimately, in the end, because you know, like Ray was saying and everything, we can't verify if all funds have been returned. Here I am, you know, I'm out thousands of dollars. I'm now living in Pennsylvania in a strange state with no income. And, you know, I mean, we ended up having to move. We ended up not being able to stay in Connecticut. We couldn't find a place that quick. And, um, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, I guess when everything's said and done, I guess it does seem criminal to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. And did you get the money back that Mike had, um, that you had, you know, given Mike? I never gave Mike any money. 
Oh, okay. I just, I was, the, the money I'm out is like, you know, moving down here for a job that never existed in the first place and stuff like that. Mm. And, and so all said and done, I'm out about $6,000. Okay, and what Between kind of... the move and renting the house and coming up with the deposit. Right. You know, first, last, you know, moving expenses and stuff like that. We're looking at approximately $6,000. And what kind of uh, agreement did you have with Mike? That I would be the director of the shelter and that he would start me off with $35,000 a year. As um, money increased, he'd up me up to 40000 a year. And, and have you done that kind of work before? Um, I've never directed a shelter before. I've been involved in rescue for a long time. And he kept making comments, you're the expert. And I kept saying, no, I'm not the expert, but I'm not afraid to learn. And I'm willing to learn. Mm -hmm. And um, and so then there was a little bit of that, you know. I mean, other than putting my story out there, um, I've been careful about what I've said. I've kept things respectable. And, you know, then, oh, a week or so ago, Mike started really trashing me and putting me down. At one point, uh, one night, I did have a job. Then later on, I didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. And come to find out, he had offered the same job to another person at the same, uh, for the same amount of money. Right. And, and um, okay, uh, you know, this century, yeah, let me ask you, Rock, I'm talking yes. to our, our board op here, Rock. Uh, in listening, what do you what are you thinking with, from what you? Uh, from what I'm heard, um, I, like everybody says, he had he started off with good intentions, but he didn't. I don't think he planned everything right. Mm -hmm. I don't think he had right judgment and a lot of stuff. Not to blame him for anything, but you know, blame is where it is. If you make a mistake, you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. You still got to you still got to uh, fall back on what you did. You know, you're responsible for everything you did mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. And if you made the wrong decisions and you made the wrong choices without planning, that's what happens. And everyone in the outside, you know, you got to think about it. Who else fails? The mm -hmm. dogs are a big consideration here because now a lot of dogs that could have been saved aren't. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that could have been done wasn't. And then the people surrounding that are, that already put their hopes and admirations and, and, and family into this are now put to the side, to the wayside. So mm -hmm. his planning, his decisions were poor. His intentions were good. But in overall, he made a wrong choice, and he has to live with that. Mm -hmm. And take it as you may. I'm not putting him down, but I'm saying you have to live up to your responsibility now. Right, right. And it, uh, okay, so uh, Mike says that he's trying to call in. So Janice, uh, you want to say something so I can? Uh, I let uh, maybe I let uh, I need to let two of you guys go. So who's who's done with their statement and can just listen, guys? Uh, uh Rocky, or not Rock, Foster. You can. It's Lori. I'm still on, and you can let me go. But I. Okay, Lori. What do you think? I'm confused. She moved. You moved. Did you? I can't imagine picking up and moving without confirmation of everything going on. Right. So I'm really confused on that statement. You can hang up with me, but I, I would kind of like to look. Sure, you know? sure. We'll ask Katie to do that. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Lori. I'll talk to you in a few minutes, Lori. Uh, Katie, why, uh, why would you do that? Well, what it was is we came to, you know, Mike had been honest with me at the very end of it that he hadn't secured the building in Trenton, but was looking at a few other things. So it came down a month ahead of time. And, um, you know, because he was like, oh, this is the weekend I'm going. I'm meeting with Anthony. I'm going to sign the lease this weekend. And then I'm going to get cracking on the shelter. I'm going to get going. And, um, so that's why we came down. You know, he told me this was the weekend he was meeting with the landlord, and he was going to sign the lease, and everything was going to move forward from right then. So we came down, and Mike was also supposed to meet us in New Jersey that weekend, and, of course, he no-showed. And so we came, we looked at some places. You know, we had to move out of, out of the house we were living in because it was being sold. And well, it was sold actually, and that's why we couldn't stay where we were because the house had already been sold, and the new owners were taking possession. So, um, so we came down, you know, on his word that they were you know, that he was signing the lease that weekend, and then we rented the place. Then, when everything came to a head, approximately a week before we were supposed to move, I did contest my landlord. And, you know, I tried to get out of the lease, tried to work, you know, an arrangement with her, 
to even maybe refund some of the money, you know, keep a month's rent, give us back a month's rent. But, you know, she wasn't willing to do that. And, I mean, okay. you know, we did sign a lease. Um, so, I mean, that was her right. And so it was, it was and then we only had a week to try to find a place in Connecticut, and we couldn't right. find one. Okay. But, in that but, short but, period, but, so we had a place here, so we had to move to where we had a place. Right. But in, but in brief, but briefly, uh, and I think we got Mike joining us now. Mike, you there? Yes. I'm okay. Here. Good. Okay. So, but Katie, but briefly, what what was it that made you decide to plan on moving without having, you know, some sort of concrete confirmation that this thing was happening with Mike and everything? Why did? What, at what point? What What did Mike say or you uh, believe that that made you decide to pick up and move to? Um, um, well, what brought us down here to look is that, you know, it was, you know, he kept telling me this was the weekend he was meeting with the landlord in Trenton, and this was the weekend he was signing the lease. And, and so, and that at was that when point, I felt he had been honest with me. Yeah, what, uh, Katie, what, what, what point in the year was that? What month was that? This was the beginning, this was the first week of March. Okay. And, and so it was approximately going to be a month until the shelter opened. Oh, okay. All right, Mike? Yeah. What do you have to say about that? Well, I tried to go and I tried to talk to the landlord again and see if he could work with us so um, he could get a better deal instead of having to come up with all the money that he wanted up front. He changed his mind since the first time that I met him. And I offered Katie to call her realtor and whatever and try to make it right and ask and explain to them the situation that the shelter was um, financially not you know available for us to do any kind of operation yet and try to get her money back for us. I called and offered her and she would not give me that information. Katie. Yes. I, I feel, okay. I, and like I said, I, I feel bad for everybody or anything that, that, you know, that I said or that is wrong, and I went ahead and, and I apologized. I went way over my head, and I really thought that this could happen, and a lot of other people thought it would happen, too, and we all tried to come together and make it work, and it just, there, it was just, there was just so much to, to be done. Okay. But I didn't realize it. I really didn't. And I, I'm sorry. Okay, but Mike. There's, there's nothing I, nothing more I can do. Right, Mike. But let me ask you this, yes. though. Yes. Um, are, are you still telling people Pet Safe Haven is, is happening? No, I'm not. Okay. I, but cause... The only thing I said is Pet Safe Haven is a, a name, and it doesn't matter where the location is. And I went to, to New Jersey and Pennsylvania the the Thursday uh, before that, and I looked at places, and Katie and one of her friends helped to locate some of the places, and I went to check them out. And we had a couple other options that were a little bit more financially feasible, but they still weren't going to work for whatever Parker. reason. It takes a lot of time and planning, and I wasn't Parker, this is you know, equipped or yeah. ready for that. I didn't okay. have the knowledge, oh. All right. and I made a mistake. Okay, hold on, Rob. I mean, Mike, uh, go ahead, Rob. Guys, um, and guys, this right, is radio, so make your answers as, as you know, brief right. and right to the point. Go ahead. Uh, Mike, it's Rob. Hey, how you doing? Um, the hey, thing Rob. that confuses me is you have been in reality in in your life, correct? I've been in what? You you take care of real estate and you know inspections and all that. How did you I, not know? Did you know that this property was not um, zoned? For animals? Uh, well, the landlord told me that it was, and that he he was going to work with me to, and he had all the permits. Right, but 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 and but I wait a minute, but but Mike, Mike, wall, Mike, wait Mike, wait a minute, but Mike, wait a second. In the conversation that we're listening, and I was asking about the lead paint and the other problems with the building, and what about sprinkler systems, and you know all the other stuff. That they needed to bring that building up to speed. Right, but Mike, Mike, wait a second. You saying the landlord told me uh, what if you were doing this and you are getting money and you're asking people and this is your project? 
What about right. picking up the phone and doing your own due diligence? A landlord told me that's like going to buy a used car. And the guy said, yeah, it's, a, it's really it's a Cadillac, but it's got a Mercedes engine. You don't, Correct. You, you know, Correct. W- w- and, what, and what is that? From the city council contacted me, and she said that, no, that, that we have to have a meeting because the zoning would have to be changed. And there would have to be a bunch of different things that would have to happen. Okay, but wait a second, Mike. But wait a second, wait a second, guys. Wait a second. Mike, you're still going. And listen to me because I ask you a question and you don't answer the question. You're saying something else. What I'm saying to you is, what about you? You're saying the city council contacted you. I'm saying you just said that the landlord told you. What did Mike who is the person behind this? What did you do to be proactive to know if any of this was possible? To know if you could do this? Did you well, care? I, See, because that's the part that's troubling, you know, with the whole situation with people. It appears that only thing you had this idea in the beginning, and then you just got all about getting the money, and you didn't no. care. You didn't. Do, you stopped doing the due diligence to find out if it was possible to do. To be proactive, I went and filed with the IRS to get my EIN number, and I went ahead and I tried to file for grants. But Mike, 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 Grant, no, Steve, see, wait a minute. That's not what I'm talking about. That is stuff, but a grant, wait a minute. council person. Right, but a grant, Mike, a grant takes months and months to get through. What I'm talking about, what I'm talking about, right. I did not know that. What I'm talking about is... Plain and simple zoning. Plain and simple. You're going to put a shelter in an area. Okay, if there's a a child daycare next door, if there's a grocery store next door, common sense tells you you're not going to be able to put a a dog shelter there. I'm saying, did you go down to City Hall? Did you pick up, go online and check and see what zoning is? When you say the landlord told me, that is bullshit, man. You know, you can't say that, the, you know, he told me that's like the elephant ate my homework, man. You know, what did Mike do? Because that's what I'm concerned about. You know, what were you doing to try to make this happen? And to, if you didn't have any experts involved, you know, and you asking Katie to be involved. And Katie says she's never ran a shelter, but she wanted to learn. Who is she going to learn from? She going to learn from the guy that don't know what he's doing? The guy that won't even check and find out if it's permitted, if it's zoned, if it's anything, yet you're constantly asking people for money. Do you see where the problem is here? I absolutely do, yes. And what, it, and what was your it's mindset? It's my fault that I tried to go into Well, that. we know it's, it's your company. fault, but I'm saying. I, I'm not an expert. Right, but I'm saying to you, I, it's, it's hands down, it's your fault. We, can, we passed that part. Yeah. Well, what, I'm, what I'm trying to determine is what is your mindset, Mike? What were you thinking? Why weren't you trying to get these permits? You see, because this is why everybody is saying they believe it turned into criminal activity, whether it was or not. But you... You lost sight. You start focusing on the money and you lost sight of doing if you had did your homework, if you had done the things that was focused on making it possible, maybe everything could have worked out. But you stopped fo- you stopped doing anything except for talking. You know, now what is zoning because what I was told from the, the zoning office when I called taken well more than $8,000 just for him to have gotten the station and the planning done, and it would have taken no less than three. Hello, you no broke up. What, no matter what, no less than what? Open by April 1st. Right. Oh, okay, let me do this. Katie? Yes? All right, I'm going to ask you to hang up. Because we got your side, and we right uh, because uh, can any other calls come through? And I want to hur- hurry up and kind of wrap this up because Mike has to go to his new job, and we want to let him go. So, Katie, unless you got anything else to say, I'm gonna ask you to hang up. Right? No problem. Okay. Ta- you got anything else to say, Katie? No, I I basically said it all. Okay. And my uh, Mike. Mike. Yes. Okay, so uh, just real quick, on the Katie situation, tell me in 30 seconds or less, what happened with Katie and you? 
I told Katie had come to me and said that she was interested in helping with the shelter with her husband. And I said, yes, that would be fine because it's going to be hard for me to be there during the weekdays. And I said to her, I said, look, I said, you can come and help. I said, but you probably, in your best interest, would need to have some kind of job because it's not, it's a, a not for profit. Right. You know, but you offered, you, but you offered her money for the year, right? No, I did not offer her money. Why would she say that then? I wrote a letter for her to give to her realtor so she could get the place that she was trying to get. Okay, now, see, I let Katie go because now uh, I need Katie more than I need Rob. So, Katie, you can call well, back. I actually did have you, insight on that. Okay, go did ahead. You falsify, did you falsify a, a document for Katie to get out home then? Rob? Um, yes. Mike? Yes. Did uh, you think, falsify a document to, to the real estate people to get a home, to get Katie a home then? I still, I still didn't hear you. He said, did you make a document for Katie to get a home loan that she was going to be working for you? I made a document as so she could rent a house. Okay, and that what document she, said she what? She asked me to give her that document. And what was that document about? What did that document say, Rob? I mean, uh, Mike? It just said that she was going to be working at the shelter um, and that she was going to make uh, uh, X amount of dollars and that she Wait, needed, what was the uh, act? Wait a second. Was, wait, wait. Okay, uh, right. Yeah. You just said that she go ahead. She was going to be working. The and, yeah. I want to know what the X is, the X amount of dollars. Because oh. They, they actually, because you said that you you never told Katie. So now you have a falsified document going to a realtor that puts Katie in trouble. I mean, I don't under, I don't know if you know the severity of all those falsifications that you're doing in in the fraudulent money that you're accepting. I, I can't hear you you're waking up. He said that you know that. You know, when you when you're making statements like this and and documents, I think that's Katie back there, uh, 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 Rock, uh, and and making statements and taking money that that's fraudulent type uh, activity. You know, and you 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 just can't do it. Is that Katie back? Yeah, I, I was asked to give her a lesson. I was asked by her to give her a lesson. At the end of the day, Mike, could get it. Hold, 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 Rob, 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 hold your statement, Katie. Yes. Okay, uh, Mike says that he, he never told you you were going to make money. I have a written letter, and I have it in screenshots where he offered me 40000 a year. Okay. All right, so Mike, uh, she says she's got the letter and screenshots. So you did offer her a job, man. I offered her a job, and I explained to her that that eventually when the place was open and that it was making um, some kind of money to afford her money, then she could she could have you know uh, work with whatever she was basically going to run the place. Hey, yeah, but Mike, wait, can I ask a question? Mike? Sure, go right why ahead. Don't you, yeah. Why don't you write me a letter saying I make 150 grand so I can buy a new house down here in Tennessee for me? <laughs> you can't do stuff like this. It's, hey, it's, it's fraudulent. Right. It's it's falsifying documents. Right, Mike. Uh, somebody just sent me a uh, a message to. F for me to ask you if you um, uh, if you did a fundraiser a year ago for Pet Depot or something like that, or no. pet, pet Deposit? No. Okay. In, in, to be honest, this isn't the first one that I've heard. I've heard that you've tried this in, in Virginia as well. Is that true, that you tried to open up a shelter down in Virginia and it fell through just as well? Mike, Mike, somebody's asking you. Uh, I couldn't. I can't. I can't. Oh, really that someone you, um, someone asked if you had tried to uh, open a shelter, or, or what was that, Rob? I, I've because um, in our investigations we do background checks on everything and everything we're doing, so we have proper knowledge that we don't come out with just blurting out false false reports. And um, we have learned that Mike has tried this in other states as well. 
Mm. Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Thank you, Rick. Is that true, Mike? No, not at all. The the first time I ever came in contact with anything to do with the dogs of New York City um, was on September 27th. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So, Katie, um, I'm going to let you go again. Thank you so much for calling back because that was the the, uh, the question, okay? No problem. Thank you, dear. And um, the – so, um, J- JJ, who's, who's, who's on the phone? I got Rob, I got Mike, and who else? Ray. Ray. Okay, Ray, what do you have to say? What do you think? Well, you know, in the beginning, he started out saying this was going to be an overflow for New York City animal care and control. Number one, those animals are never going to be allowed to go anywhere that's not within their own system, never mind across the state line. He was well informed of that. Mm -hmm. And he still continued to tell people it would be the overflow. Then he started with, I've got rescues that are ready and willing, just waiting to start pulling animals off a death row out of New York City. (laughs) <laughs> talked about how he was going to have 500 animals there. Mm-hmm. He has no clue how to handle these dogs. He has no clue how to run a shelter. He doesn't have a, an idea even the materials and the supplies he would need. With the list of all the, the, the things that he wanted to offer at Pet Safe Haven, mm-hmm. he would have needed multiple permits. Not a single permit was ever applied for. Mm. Mike? Well, that was supposed to be discussed in the meeting that I was going to have with the city council on March 24th. That okay. was the earliest they were available okay. um, yeah, to uh, have uh, a meeting with me. And Okay, March 24th. Now, that's like, and you started everything in January. You know, so that doesn't, to me, and I've never done anything, you know, that's, I mean, I, I, I can fuck up a soup sandwich, so, you know, that's just, that's me. You know, you ask my wife, I'm the stupidest guy on the planet. But, Mike, I'm wondering if, you know, you you really catching up. Because if you, don't you think that these meetings at the city council and stuff, don't you think you should have started those before you started asking people for money? Well, I would have started those, but like I said, my landlord told me, and I asked him about permits for the zoning and for the dogs and to have a shelter there and all the different things that were involved. He said that he had them. Wait a minute, but he's not doing it. Was he part? Was he partners with you? He said that he had a lot of friends that were going to get involved. In okay, wait, 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 Mike, 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 back up, back up, Mike, Mike, back up, back up, back up. The question. Was the landlord partners with you on this venture? Not partners, no. Okay. So, it was Mike's deal. And who's on the phone? It was Mike's deal, but somebody told you, you know, that it's like, see, this this the problems that I have is that when you say somebody told me, did somebody say it, yet somebody said it is not part of it. And Mike is doing everything, and Mike is responsible, but Mike doesn't get any answers that Mike can know. You know? I mean, when you say city council in March 24th, and all of this stuff starts January 8th, and you're asking people for money, you got people talking, you know, you're offering jobs to people to come in and do, um, you know, come in and, and, and move and take jobs and this different stuff. What about all that due diligence? You know, and if you say you ask people, you know, to, that could help you, that could inform you, didn't anybody ever tell you, hey, Mike, you got to have all of these different things to do that back in January when you had this bright idea? People started to uh, tell me these things, and I realized that, you know, what I was up against wasn't going to be easy. And the, you know, I mean, I, I, I couldn't come up with, they wanted me to sign a three-year lease. That's a $150,000 if it didn't work out that I would be responsible for. Right. But, Mike, did, uh, once again, once again, 
I'm saying to you, answer my question. It's real simple. I try to make everything simple. And our, our in-studio guest is here, so we're going to be wrapping this up real soon, soon, soon. Um, but I'm saying, Mike, in the very beginning, when you got this, when you woke up in the morning and said, oh, hey, Pet Safe Haven, this is a great idea. You didn't think to, to just, just find out if it was possible at all? Well, you just started out with, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to ask people for money. No, I, I, have a I started to try to find out what I could, and I started to do research on it. And then some people recommended that, if, you know, to put a, like, a you carrying up for Okay, donations. some people. Who are some people? Uh, my some of my friends. Uh, some one of my I, friends but, helped me make the Okay, website. but you got to name names. We don't say this because, I mean, because, you know, I'm saying, I'm trying to find out how you came to this brilliant idea of doing a, um, you know, you're going to do Pet Safe Haven, and you didn't think to to involve anybody but you. But you say some of your friends said start uh a you care so the first thing that came up when you said i'm going to do pet safe haven was uh get some money from people not no do some no, research not at all okay so that's what you just said that's what i'm asking you what was the process you said i'm going to do pet safe haven you didn't go and check for permits you didn't go check for zoning you didn't go you didn't have a building at that point so what was the steps and but before you answer that paula what do you say I have a question for Mike. Um, <clears throat> I'm wondering, um, what was your profession before you started with this idea? What, what line of work are you in? What did you do that prepared you or, um, you know, what, what were you doing before this? I am a technology engineer, and before that, I was in the commercial and residential improvements. Okay, so Are being in the residential going? improvements, you're familiar with having to get permits and those type of things in order to do improvements, correct? Correct, and, and I spoke with the city council person. And they set up a meeting for March 24th. That was the only available date that they had to get everybody okay. together. Excuse oh. me. I, I, I know that. But my next question for you is, being an engineer, engineers are um, known to be logical people, and they think out, they plan out, um, you know, the the their jobs. Engineers are known for their logistics of planning and, and, you know, to make things happen. So with that being said, um, you knew about permits and things, and you also are um, an engineer, which is a planner. So I'm a little confused as why to, this wasn't planned out better and why it fell apart. I'm just, you know, I'm just... Um, yeah, but, well, because, because, Mike, why didn't you plan it better, man? Well, that would be um, inexperience, and, um, you know, I'm just, it, it wasn't, I realized it wasn't going to work at some point. I have a question uh, of when did the GoFundMe in the carrying account end? What were the final dates that you closed them down? What's in that? When did you when did you close down the GoFundMe and you funded and all that? I I never had a GoFundMe. It was called You Caring. Okay. And it was closed down on March 30th. I sent them an email and said that just to go ahead and refund all the money to the people who sent money, and the total was six hundred ninety one dollars. Okay. What about the PayPal? The PayPal. I returned all the money. Um, on March 25th, I believe. That's and good. That, then a few days later, I closed the PayPal account after the money was returned, so nobody else would send any money to it. Good. All right. So so uh, we can say that all the money has been returned, correct? Yes, sir. And, Praise you know, I, I really, you know, I'm really sorry 
that I wasn't better prepared, that I wasn't, um, you know, an absolute expert on it. I, I just put my heart into it, and I tried. You okay. know, it, and it wasn't process. ever, ever about oh. the money. It was about trying to save these dogs and trying to, you know, do the right thing. And I, I admit, I, I did I did wrong. I, you know, I, I screwed up. I mean, what more can I say? I mean, well, that that um, is I'm that sorry. is it. I think that. Okay, and the lesson that we learned from this, Mike, is what? To start small, if you're gonna do it. No, you're still you missing the boat, Mike. Research, no, Mike, you, you're still missing the you know, boat, Mike. Do Mike, what you can. Mike, stop. Okay, you're still missing the boat. All right, it's not to start small. It's to one. The first lesson is honesty. Okay, that's the first lesson, you know, because that was the reason that I was only, you know, I was pissed because uh, I was associated. You know, I mean, I've been in business for 35 years, you know, made money, lost money, not made money, had great days and bad days. But one thing that nobody out there, you type on the Internet and find out anything Foster Quarter's name is associated with that was wrong that where he lied, stole, cheated, or any of that. You know, now you might find a couple of women that say some stuff, but but no, <laughs> but no, nobody's gonna say that uh, Foster is not a man of his word and he ever took money or any of that stuff. And and that with you, Mike, um, my name got associated with this whole you know pet safe haven and 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 people being upset about and you came on our show and I, as i said you didn't come on this show asking for money for your adventure and stuff thank god you came on here talking about laws changed in virginia and those things so i'm gonna say this uh because who's on the phone we had a different call another caller i just wanted to acknowledge who was that Ra? i don't know uh, who's who, who joined us on the phone hello yes who's this Hi, this is Christine. Hi, Foster. How are you? Good, Christine. What do you have to say before I uh, really start to wrap this up? Okay, real quick. Um, what, what Mike tried to do was a rescue's dream, and I run a rescue. I just want to clarify, Katie contacted me back in, I believe it was the end of December, mm -hmm. of January. December, oh, Lord. Go ahead. And she had told me that Mike had offered her a position, and she asked me what I thought was a fair pay. She filled me in on this, and I told her, I said, listen, go back to this guy, Mike, and tell Mike he's pipe dreaming. Hmm. Because many rescues, many decent rescues, myself included, um, one that's very angry that he gets this money, and we look for $200 and can't get it to fix one of our dogs. Exactly. Okay? It was never going to happen. Mm -hmm. It takes years, years. For something like this to go through. Right. Not two months, not three months, not four months, not six months. But he's lying about never offering Katie this, this position because Katie would have never have come to me right. to ask me what she thought or I thought would be a fair pay for her to collect. I said, Katie, don't look for a pay for two to three years. That's exactly what I told her. Right. Did Katie listen? Unfortunately, she didn't. She didn't. No, she was trusting. And I mean, and that is... See, that is part of the sad part uh, about, you know, the Internet. I mean, because there are a lot of people who, and that's why I started to show off with saying the, the situation in the animal community is like watching uh, the you know, Ethiopian babies with the flies around their noses and the big bellies and from swole up from not having food and stuff, you know, and the animal community has been watching this and watching this. And it's so frustrating because there is no one place that you can send a couple of dollars to and take care of that, you know, so everybody is frustrated. People, the good people want to do something and um, some bad people prey upon these things, you know, but f the overall is causing a angry, angry community of frustrated people. And something has to happen. And we, with this show, we're trying to do our best to help facilitate change in different things. So um, I do, you know, I want to wrap this up, guys. And I'm going to give my court of public opinion opinion. And, um, you know, uh, we only have one other judge you know, pretty much on this show, and he didn't make it today. That would be my dog, Grip. No, uh, Paula Archer. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say this, and you guys can, you know, I'll give everybody a chance to respond before 
uh, I we, I hang up on you. But Mike, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say that, um, you know, and I and I don't mean this. Well, I guess I do mean it in a personal way. You know, I don't think Mike that you are a criminal. I think that you are a guy that really doesn't have a life. And uh, you're trying to have a life. Uh, I think your intentions for the dogs are good. I think you were genuinely trying to do something for the dogs. But I think that, um, you know, in an effort to um, be somebody, you know, like in my favorite term I use on a lot of my posts that Steve Martin said from The Jerk uh, when he said, the new phone book is here. The new phone book is here. Now I am somebody, you know, and I think, Mike, you want to be somebody. I think that you're not somebody. I don't think you're the person that you want to be. I don't think you're the person that you uh, perpetrated to people. Um, I think that you know, the, you, again, you were trying to do something good, but you're so far out of your league. And you stepped, you know, you stepped across the line of, of stupidity, you know, because, again, I can't pat you on the ass and say, oh, yeah, because, you know, I messed up. I was, because you didn't mess up. You fucked up. You know, you fucked up people's lives. You fucked up reputations. You fucked up uh, the community for all the good people. And Paula is shaking her finger at me saying, don't you be cursing. But I'm not going to curse. I'm going to just say you fucked up. You know, uh, you might, you know, there are a lot of people, man who honestly are trying to do what you uh, were attempting to do in a lack, lust, in a, you know, carefree manner. You know, you were too easy to ask people for their hard-earned money. Do you know how much good shit that we're trying to do around here? And we haven't asked people for money ever. You know, we don't, when, when I, bef the reason I started this show is because I had our sponsor, Pitbull Energy Drink, was matching $200,000 for me to do a movie. And I started asking people for money, and I could not raise $200,000. But you know what I said? Okay, I told him I couldn't do it. And what I did is I started this show so I could do something that I could control. I did what I could do. And I, I did the research. You didn't do the research. That makes you stupid. You didn't care after people started giving you money. That made people feel like you were a criminal. So, you know, what you're guilty of is being non-caring about other people. You And, I mean, the whole writing the letter for Katie and different stuff like that. You know, I don't know what that's about. You gave back people the money. That makes me very happy. And so what I say is, Mike, uh, you need to start in rebuilding your reputation and doing some, doing good stuff and stop talking over your head. Stop trying to be a bigger person than you are. Just be who you are and be honest. There's no shame in being broke. Not, I'm sure 90, well, I'm sure 100 percent. Of the people that are on the phone right now are broke. I'm sure that Paula Archer and me and my, my engineer Rock and our in studio guests, we're all broke. It's no shame in that. But you can't lie to people, man, because your credibility is the only thing you got. So today, Mike, thank you so much for coming on here and explaining to the people who've had concerns. I hope we can put this issue to bed. Mike has returned all of the money. That is good. Oh, that, yes. Okay, so um, um, just to let you know, go ahead. Who, who's call, the who's talking? In the state Who? And the the IC three. Are Wait a minute, you you you're breaking up. Who is that talking first? It's Ray. Okay, Ray, say what you're going to say. It's not criminal. The authorities feel it's IC yeah. three and the authorities in the state of New York looking into what he's done. Okay, so you you broke up there, but um. Uh, I basically, I think what you said was, it's, it's not criminal, but the authorities are looking into Mike's activities, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And um, the last lady that called in, what's your name? Christine. Christine. Okay. You have anything to say, Christine? Because we're going to move on. Thank you so much for your input, Christine. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, we feel for Katie. Uh, Rob Nugent, what do you have to say? I still feel that it was fraudulent, and the chart was way before. And I've I've met a lot of people that 
come off as nice with bad intentions. So, and I've met a lot in rescue, mm-hmm. and I just I, I want people to do the research before there are a lot of good rescues out there that that do need funding. And like That's you said, this is giving the whole funding and oh. rescue community a black eye. I just want people to do the research on IEN number in fifty five dollars. Anybody can have in five five minutes. Go check out, make sure they have their 501c3s. Make sure your money is actually going to where you, it needs to go. That's right. To the dogs and, and to these rescues that are actually doing good work. Exactly. Um, okay. And, and that's pretty much it, Foster. Okay, and thank you so much. And uh, uh, Rob's got my engineer, Rock, who's got a long history in animals, too, has something to say. Um, the only thing I have to say is this. Don't be naive. Either way, on both sides of the picture, don't be naive. If you're going, this dogs and animals are a thing that people will always be paying money, always want to be part of, always want to help out. So in that, when there's people that want to help out and do things and do a positive thing, there's always people behind the scenes. Not saying uh, Mike, but people are there that will leech, find any way to make money off of someone else and steal, rob, and hurt other people because there's opportunity there. So don't be naive on your end. If you are getting into a situation where somebody is trying to do good, you still got to do your research. Yeah. You still have to protect yourself. Don't be as it, I put blame on both sides. That's okay? right. Okay. Because the person behind there trying to help out and do something and see this person doing something, you need to research them. You need to research what they're doing. Find out. Even though he didn't know exactly what he was doing. You as a person, try to help that person out. You need to get this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. If you're not if you're not going to do this, I can't be part of it. Right. Well, that's where the, the Ethiopian baby thing kicks in at, you know, because people, people on the web would rather just chew your ass up and hate you than to help you. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's number one. You know, they, I mean, you know, they don't want to support you doing nothing good. So you better have your act together on whatever you're doing. Because right. people will love to hate. And that's, again, part of it is just the nature of uh, the Internet where people can have a voice just because you got a mouse, you can have an opinion. But the other part is the Ethiopian baby syndrome in the animal community. Okay, Rob, so I'm going to let you go. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Foster. I appreciate your time today. No problem. Thanks for your participation. So, Ray. Right, take care, brother. Okay. Ray, what do you have to say, dear, in closing? And you know, people understand he was given opportunity back in January that I know of to make things, and he continued on the wrong path. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And, and, um, and he's still. I'm sorry, say again. He posted picture of a state park in New Jersey, in Jersey City. And Mike. Wait, blank. Is that the new location? And he said yes. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Mike, you didn't do that, did you? Well, she asked me if that was the New Jersey thing. And that was what I put on my profile picture. Yeah, it was. Oh my know, God, Mike, was, Mike, why don't you, park. Mike, why don't Come you, on. Mike, Mike, why don't you just, <sighs> why don't you just stop, brother? Why don't you just back up? I mean, realize that you you stepped in a pile of shit, and you gotta take your shoes off and go in the house and wash them and change shoes and a whole bunch of stuff, man. Cause just stop. You know, this ain't for you. That is not for you. That's it. You you blown that one. You cannot do a sanctuary right now, Mike, by any stretch of the imagination unless you win the lottery, okay? Then you can do it, and you can go, nah, 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 show all y'all. But as far as doing anything that's going to require community support, brother, stop. Just stop. That's not your area. Join up with some other people and do some good work. That's what I was saying. And put your, yeah, put your energy into supporting the group and, and just rebuild your stuff and learn. Learn what you're doing. Worst, but you yeah, got to just stop. That's worst not you. Find somebody running a sanctuary, go help them, assist yeah. them, and learn. And learn, man. But that's not you. You're not going to be that guy, Mike. Just forget about it. Mike, I have no disrespect for you. I just want you to do the right thing. Get out there. And I know your heart's where it wants to be. You know what you want to do. Get out there and do it. Leave the sanctuary alone for now. Work with someone that's doing it. Maybe later on in life you can go back to that. That's right. So that's what I have to say to that. Uh, Last in closing, Paula Archer, I'll give you 30 seconds because I got a pit bull in the studio. All right. Well, I I appreciate all the comments. All right, Mike. All right, Mike. Hold on one Um, second. Hold one second. We got one closing comment with Paula. Go, uh, Paula. 
Mike, go yes. do some community service. Help the animals, help the rescues, help the shelters. Learn and pay for your mistake through helping others. Yeah. It's no disrespect. No. Nope. Just don't hurt the animals any more than they're already suffering. Yeah, you got to don't tell people you're going to do anything. You're not doing anything but helping some people who are already in need of help. But you can't initiate anything, Doc. It's just not the, it's just not the time right now. Okay? Fair enough. Yes, absolutely. Okay, man. So we're going to uh take a break and save our show and do a commercial and pay some bills and when we come back, we're going to get some real dogs adopted by a real adopter and uh and try to get some babies some homes with Paula Archer. Everybody, thank you so much for calling and taking the time and watching. We'll be right back and continue and we're going to come back with Maria Sanchez. Maria, yeah, but the dog. Oh, Ginger. <laughs> ginger. All right, can we show Ginger? Do you see Ginger? Hey, baby. Hi, you like Pitbull? Hey, all right. We, we got some Pitbull energy drink here for Ginger. All right, Ginger, it's, Ginger is like, <laughs> hey, it's pretty early in the damn morning. You know, you're all for happy, dude. Well, okay, Mike, take care. Ray, take care. We'll be back after word from our sponsor. Whoever came up with the term man's best friend, it couldn't have